prohibits what's what's known as like uh, it's when you put your elbows on the ground and there are a number of different rulings that are related to prayer that it's important for us to keep in mind and discuss when we talk about the the form or the structure of the prayer uh, you will find that uh, there are a number of scholars who talk about the difference between the prayer of a man and a woman uh, interestingly enough, in, the, in, the, in some of the madahib, they actually allow the women to put their hands on the ground. And the reason that they allow that is because they say that this is actually more covering and more appropriate for, for the woman. So you will find that when it comes to the prayer of the woman, men, they will, they'll be more open in their prayer when they're on the ground. For women, you'll have many madahib, you know, even in the, the Hanbali madahib, they'll say that she should actually keep her arms close to herself instead of spreading them out. Uh, another thing that, that we find during the prayer is there, there are some who, who will take certain ahadith and talk about how to actually implement them and from them is straightening the rows. So many of us know the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that when you guys line up, you know, Ka'b al Ka'b and Munkib al Munkib, you know, to line up uh, ankle to ankle, shoulder to shoulder. Uh, this hadith is narrated in Abu Dawood and then just a, a couple of hadith below that one, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said line up neck to neck also. So the question then comes, are these hadith meant to be understood literally? Are you, are you supposed to actually touch the person who is next to you and be as close, close as possible? Uh, or did the Prophet ﷺ mean this in a figurative way? Uh, you have another hadith that help, actually helps uh, give an explanation or gives us light to how to deal with this. And this is a hadith of Anas uh, It's narrated in Musannaf Abdul Razak. And he said that when I would come to pray, prayer, رَأَيْتُ أَهَدُنَا He said that I would see one of us touching uh, the person who is next to him. So if we take all of these hadith, it, it's very clear that the intention behind lining up with the person next to you is to be as close as possible to them. But is touching the person next to you a condition or is it something that is an obligation? No, it, it's not. It, it's, it's a sunnah. Uh, the, the problem that we have is that many times you will have brothers who are constantly shifting in their prayer, right? So they'll constantly be moving their feet. The order to connect and the order to stand as close to the person next to you it's supposed to be before the prayer. It's not during the prayer. During the prayer, what should I be focusing on? The prayer, right? <laughs> I'm supposed to be focusing on my individual prayer. I'm not supposed to be focusing on how I'm standing or the direction I'm moving in. This is not the purpose of that. Even when the Imam is leading, even when the Imam is leading, I'm supposed to be busy with the prayer. If somebody comes and walks in front of me or somebody's walking by, it's okay. The sutra of the imam is the sutra for the jama'ah. So it's not necessary for me to busy. I find it odd how some of us busy ourselves so much with the outward of the prayer without focusing on the actual inward and what is going on, what is being recited, what it is that I'm saying during the salah. Because if we say that salat tanha and fasha wal munkab, that prayer is to prevent us from evil and fighting and all of these things, what efforts are we making and what is the problem if we're still fighting and we're still bickering amongst each other? What is the prayer doing? And if the prayer is not serving that purpose, then that means there's something wrong with the way that I am praying. And Focusing only like I'm not saying that the structure of the prayer is not important. No, uh, obviously the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He told us how to pray the madahib have defined for us what the structure of the prayer is supposed to look like You know, I can't make sajda before I make ruku, for example, right? I can't do that or I can't do read Fatiha and then do Taslim. This is not how we pray But as long as a person is following the structure of that prayer and making sure that they're doing the best that they can To pray lining up close with the person next to them again. Yani it's very clear from these ahadith that the idea behind what the Prophet is saying is to stand close as possible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, so yeah, yeah. So, so the thing is, the, there you have two hadith about this, right? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "If if you knew, if you knew, you wouldn't pass in front of somebody who's praying forty." And he he left it open, right? So we said we didn't know if he meant forty days, forty years, etc. 
Uh, we have other hadiths where the Prophet ﷺ said, prevent the person from passing in front of you. How are these hadiths supposed to be understood and what is the purpose behind them? And if a person is looking to disrupt your prayer, right? If a person is purposely looking to disrupt your prayer, this, this is the point. But if someone doesn't know I'm praying, me hitting him on the chest, is that going to help? Or me stopping someone, is that, is that going to help him? People who, and, and sometimes we see this, it might be good, for example, as a lesson for children, right? But does it make sense to hit a grown man? Uh, is it going to help my prayer and is it going to help his prayer if, if I do that? Um, so if from, from Ta'deeb, from ta like, and, and, and to teach someone a lesson, it's very important for us to understand who, are, who we are teaching a lesson to and how much space can I have before passing the person in front of me, enough for him to make sajda, right? You know, if, if the person is standing here, you know, for example, if, if the uh, Khuna is standing here and I'm walking like this, yeah, this is completely disrespectful. But the thing is, if I'm making an effort and I'm walking around and I'm beyond the space of where he's making sajda, and he, it's better not to, it's better not to, but sometimes the masjid is crowded. What do you do? You do the best that you can, inshallah, and you pass by. And, uh, you know, and, and we try, the, the purpose of these spaces for the masajid is that we learn how to accommodate each other. Right? That, that's, that's the point. Uh, and even if I'm praying my sunnah or whatever, some people... They're like, oh, well, this person shouldn't pass in front of me. Like, is it a good idea for me just to start praying anywhere that I'm standing? Like, there, there has to be some awareness and there has to be some cognizance. And it has to be from both sides. It has to be from both sides. But if I can't find a way out, and I have to go. If I have to go to work, I need to go home. Or I want to leave, right? You know, this, this happens. Like, I don't, I don't want to stay. And sometimes we feel trapped. <laughs> We're waiting, waiting for everybody to pray. You know, try not to disrespect everyone uh, and, and do your best that you can to get out. And for the people who are praying, try to do your best to be cognizant of the people who want to leave.